everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Tammy I own Walnut Creek Bath Boutique and today is my one year um, anniversary on YouTube so I know I said September 21st was my year I said that a couple times but actually it is the 24th I went back and looked <laughs> And this video is just a get to know me video, maybe a little bit of looking back, a little bit of looking forward, answering a few questions, and just kind of, kind of me just kind of sharing, sharing a little bit with you. <laughs> um, I'm in my basement. I just wanted a different kind of you know, scenery for you guys. We get, you know, what is that? The Christmas story. It's better than the fistful of dollars. <laughs> I hate that fistful of dollars poster. <laughs> um, so anyway, a little bit of background on me, what I do, who I am, how I got started, all that good stuff. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. If you're not, see you in the next video. <laughs> all right, so really quickly about me, I, uh, I get asked on, um, I have gotten asked, I should say, uh, several times over the year, whether I'm a nurse or not. I am not, I am a medical assistant. I have been a medical assistant for 30 years now. I work for an orthopedic surgeon in our local hospital. So the hospital owns our practice. You see a lot of hospital, you know, logos for me because, you know, hospital swag, it's free. <laughs> and I love these shirts. They're so comfy. Um, so that's why you see a lot of hospital things that I wear. Um, someone asked if I, um, have a history of cancer or have a loved one with cancer my dad has cancer it is quite manageable but that's not really why i wear all the cancer shirts we have a, an oncology department in my hospital that is always raising money by selling cancer shirts and i just always buy one every time i'm an orthotic fitter i uh which is basically bracing i do a lot of knee bracing uh, mostly knees is what I do, um, so it's very rewarding. Um, I like patient care. I like um, having a patient come in with knee pain and have, and seeing their amazed look on their face when they leave our office with very little knee pain is very rewarding. Um, I really like bracing. I like casting. Um, I you know I just like my job. I work with a great group of women. And my doctor's great. We've been together for 22 years, so she's wonderful. Uh, my manager's wonderful. I just, I'm very, very fortunate that I have such a good atmosphere, a positive atmosphere at work. Um, so I'm, I'm, I really, really like the women I work with, and and I like my office, and I like what I do. Uh, so that's what I do. Uh, I, uh, I have been married for 29 years. I have two sons and five grandchildren. <laughs> um, so that's just kind of me in a nutshell. That's kind of what I do. So I'm going to go through my questions and, and answer those really quickly. Um, Tara wanted to know what type of wax I use and what I use on my hair. <laughs> so thank you for the compliment, Tara. She says, my, what, do, what do I use to maintain those gorgeous curls? So that's sweet. <laughs> um, my hair, real quick, I get asked a lot about my hair. Usually in person people ask. It is natural. And I fought my curls and my gray for most of my life, you know, as we do. I don't do that anymore. I, and I, my products, I just use curl specific products. So I use a curl cream and a gel every single time I do my hair. I only kind of wash my hair once or twice a week. Um, it's pretty easy, but that one day a week, you know, I do my deep treatments, I'll do an Opalex treatment, I, you know, I, that, that day is devoted, so usually Sundays are devoted to my hair, um, because it's a process sometimes, but then the rest of the week I don't have to really do much to it. Right now I'm using some Bounce Curl, Curl Smith, I like Eva NYC, uh, I like Aveda products, I like Wee Dad products, um, I just use random curly hair products, but I always use a curl cream. I always use a gel. I never put terry cloth on my hair. I have a microfiber cloth for my hair. I sleep on a silk pillowcase. I sleep in a bonnet. Um, I protect my curls as best I can throughout the week to get them to last as long as I do. So I'm, I'm, I work at it, but it's, it's only really one day that I have to do much to it. So it's easy. The type of wax I use, I have, I've been using for the last couple years, uh, 
the um, Pro Blend 650 from the Flaming Candle. And here recently, I've started adding some IGI, is it 4625? It's the paraffin. And basically, the only reason I do that is because the uh, Pro Blend Soy Wax Blend, it's a little too soft and it doesn't want to come out of the uh, tarps like I would like for it to. I want it to just pop out of the wax warmer when it's cooled off and it's like it doesn't it doesn't come out cleanly and so I'm adding a little paraffin to keep to get my wax to be a little bit harder and come out cleaner and so I'm, I've been happy with that I've just about got my ratios where I want them so that's what, thank you for that Tara though so Cheryl had um, a, a few questions so I'm just going to answer those in in order how did you become interested in soap making to begin with so there, just, to, just to back up a little bit, I've always been interested in creating. I've always, I don't know if I've always been a crafter, but maybe, but I've always loved creating things and I've always loved learning new things. Um, so when I was early married, I was probably about 21, I decided I needed to learn how to sew and I wanted to sew my own dresses. I didn't wear dresses very often, but if I did, I wanted to make them. Uh, skirts and everything. So my Aunt Doris and my Aunt Lydia helped me. So Aunt Doris really helped me learn how to read a pattern. Aunt Lydia had to come over a couple times and help me uh, thread my sewing machine. My grandma gave me her old sewing machine. And I made my clothes and I made, not a lot, I, I, I shouldn't say clothes. I made a couple tops, I made some dresses, some skirts, curtains, pillows, all of that good stuff. And I still sew. I still sew. Not a lot. I don't make clothes anymore. Um, I wasn't ever very good at it. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed the process of taking yarn and, uh, or uh, fabric and thread and creating something. I loved the creative process of that. Uh, I then, I moved on to jewelry. I did jewelry for about three or four years. I made jewelry. Didn't really like it that much. <laughs> It was very tedious. I don't know how you jewelry makers do it, but stringing those beads, that was very tedious. But um, again, I just really enjoyed the process of creating. Um, I, uh, and I loved to learn. So there was a point in time where I had decided, my son had asthma really bad, um, and um, he went through a spell where he, it, it was really bad. I, I think, you know, so I decided to get rid of all the chemicals in the house and I went with all natural cleaners and I used a lot of vinegar, which he hated the smell of and he'd get all mad, uh, baking soda, all of this stuff. And that just kind of segued into liquid soap because Pinterest came out and there was all these Pinterest um, I don't know, posts about making liquid soap out of bar of of ivory. So all you had to do was shred a bar of ivory, melt it down, and you had liquid soap. <laughs> Have you seen that? <laughs> I did that three times. And it was this snotty, goopy, disgusting, blobby <laughs> liquid soap-ish. It was gross. I tried to get my family to use it. They refused. <laughs> it was horrible. Um, so at that point, I decided, well, maybe I should read up on this a little bit and, and kind of learn more about soap if this is something I want to try. And so I bought a kit from Brambleberry and I made my first batch of soap and I was hooked. Absolutely hooked. <laughs> Absolutely hooked. So um, it just kind of grew from there. Uh, I wanted to sell at a craft show and my husband was quite concerned about me not having insurance and um, getting sued and losing our house. You know, he's like, we call him the risk assessor. Don't tell him I said that because <laughs> he's always like assessing risk <laughs> for our life. <laughs> um, so uh, anyway, I decided to, before I sold my first product, I, I did get my uh, business license and got some insurance and I spend, I never looked back. And I have continued to just enjoy the process of creating. I love creating. So I love crafting. If I had a hobby, she asked what if I had any other hobbies. Um, I love crafting. There for a while, I would watch all those 
Dollar Tree DIY, you know, things, and I would try to make some, and they look so stupid. I gave up that. That's like, you know, that's not. But I, I, ha I have some wreath stuff upstairs. I'm going to make a fall wreath for over my mantle, and so I like, I enjoy that process. When I was 41, I decided it was time for me to learn the piano. Lifelong dream of mine to play the piano, and um, yeah. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> I'm not afflicted with false modesty. If you know where that's from, link it in, in uh, comment below. I'm interested to see if anyone knows where that's from, but I am not afflicted with false modesty. I do not play very well. That's okay, I enjoy it, but I don't have time. I don't have time to sit and practice the piano like you need to. Um, but I took lessons for seven years and I practiced probably two to three hours a day for seven years. Well, six years. That last year I wasn't practicing as much. It's very time consuming, but I loved every second of it. I would get up at 4.30, play for an hour, start getting ready for work. Five sometimes, play for an hour, get ready for work, come home. I'd come, come down here or upstairs to the main piano and I'd play for half an hour to an hour. And I loved every bit of it, but it got really difficult. Um, I, I don't know that the, the music got very hard and it became a little bit frustrating and I wasn't able to devote those one to two hours a day, sometimes three on the weekends, guys, I was ridiculous. Um, I just couldn't devote it because at this point I started my business and um, I still want to get back to it. I want when I retire that's what I want to do I want to I want to take lessons again and and play the piano as poorly as I do but I enjoy it so I've thought about trying to do online courses and and things again to, to balance because that's her next question how do you balance your full-time job in your business not very well Cheryl <laughs> not very well um, I struggle balancing at all I um, I do sometimes overwhelm myself with putting so much on me to do. I don't need to upload two videos a week. I don't need to do that, but I do because I'm, I'm creating that product. I might as well put a video about it, you know, but I may take that back down to one time a week when I kind of catch up on, on these videos for, from getting ready for my festival. I may take that back down and, and kind of kind of ease some of the strain on me because I really don't handle it very well. I am, I'm putting 40 hours in at work and then I'm putting 40 to 50 hours in on the business. And, uh, that's, that's tough. Well, and, and you, that's this, this summer I, I put that many hours at least, at least that many hours. So it, it is, it is a lot and I don't do well. <laughs> I don't do very well. Um, but I'm trying and I, and I do need to work on that. It's something I definitely need to work on that. And, um, my favorite product to make is her last question. And that's soap, cold press of soap, always my favorite, favorite, favorite thing to make. <laughs> I love it all, but cold press of soap is my favorite. Um, love always wins wants to know how did your YouTube channel grow your business? Crickets? Is there a cricket sound? It, I mean, I would say I made my first sell from what I believe is a YouTube subscriber in August, uh, August, maybe July. So it took a good eight to 10 months for me to make a first, my, my sell. So has it grown my business? Not yet, but I feel like it's starting to, I mean, this week I've made a couple more sales on from out of state. So I, I assume an out of state sale is probably coming from this channel, um, which is so exciting. And you know, I have to say, I have a story. <laughs> I have a story. Go figure. So I think it was my very first sale from YouTube. And guys, you know, <laughs> you know how you want to impress people with your products you want to you want them to really like what you have to offer and um, Rachel God love you if you're watching <laughs> so Rachel placed an order this summer and all I could think of was like 
No, not that soap. Not that soap. I was like, hun, she ordered this soap. It's not very good. <laughs> older it probably doesn't smell very strong anymore <laughs> and I was like oh no and you know you don't you want you want to put your best foot forward right and it's like oh and so I just have to chuckle and I'm thinking oh she'll never buy from me again because she she chose that soap and I, I should have taken it down because it's getting older all these thoughts going through my head <laughs> and I made sure to put a really fresh good soap sample in her box <laughs> and then um, so, I'm gonna tear up a little bit I'm getting a little teary but she ordered again and um, if you're watching thank you Rachel for that it's it is very humbling uh, when somebody uh, orders and then orders again even though you feel like the first thing they bought wasn't your best um, and I want to impress you guys. If you order from me, you're supporting me. That's, that's beyond, that is crazy, right? And then, but I want to impress you. And I just thought, oh, I'm not going to impress her a bit with that soap she bought. <laughs> but, you know, to answer your question, it, it's not, I'm not at the point where it's really growing my business yet. I'd like for it to get there, of course, um, but it's not, it's not really growing my business just yet, but I feel like, I feel like with these orders I've gotten in the last month, I'm like, I'm kind of towing that line of, of really expanding my, my business a bit. It, and, and it's, it's frightening and it's exciting and it's, it's I'm nervous because I don't want to, I don't want to. Um, I don't want to get my hopes up. So yeah, that's, that's kind of, but that, 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 that sorry that I took a little rabbit trail with that story about that order, but I, I feel like you guys probably know what I mean, or, or you maybe have been there. You want to impress somebody that's putting their faith in you to order something, especially sight unseen. And, um, I, I appreciate, I, I just appreciate the second order more than she'll ever know. <laughs> Uh, Love Always Wins has another question, and she said, I, I think it's a she, sorry, I don't know. Um, how long did it make, take for you to actually make back the money you spent in starting up your business? Can I, can I do another cricket sound? I don't, I, I, I'm seeing me in sounds like, uh, no, never. I, maybe one day. <laughs> so here's, here's a quick story, quick, right, let me take another drink. So I started my business, I think it was in 2016. I think it was 2016. 2017? I don't, I can't count guys, I don't remember. But it's like February will be six years. So the first three years I did not make a dime. And the first three years, every cent that I made in sales, plus every cent that I had to extra in my life, went to the business. That is partly in due to the fact that I really made stupid decisions <laughs> those first few years. I grew too fast, way too fast, and I spent money unwisely, and I, I didn't allow the products to build my business. I made all these products and then I would make more and then I would take my money and buy more ingredients so I could make more and I wanted to make this and this and this and I didn't um, I didn't just stick with soaps and then slowly include wax melts or you know I didn't build I didn't let the business build itself I I just I am all in I'm all or nothing I have always been that way three hours in piano lessons or practice I'm an all or nothing kind of girl and I was all in and all my money for three years went to this business. So will I recoup that? Probably never, <laughs> probably never. I wish I had a mentor to, to help me see the big picture and, and further along the road. Um, year four was the first year that I did not put one dime, and I haven't since put one dime of my blow money or extra money into the business. 
it paid for itself. Um, so year four, I brought in more cash than I paid out. Um, I didn't make income, uh, and I was I was right on that edge. I was pretty I was pretty what is that where you just break even type of thing. I was really close within five hundred dollars probably one way or the other because uh, taxes are weird where money in I was ahead but taxes I think I was a little behind or or short lost or whatever. Um, so there's that. But year five, I was going to make a profit for sure. I was going to make a profit and then COVID hit and then I didn't make a profit and I lost money. Year five, it was, was COVID was a bad year. So this year <laughs> I am planning on making a profit. Um, so we'll see. This is my first year of probably making a profit year and I, I will be six years in, in February. Isn't that crazy? Um, but last year really hurt my timeline. Um, so there's that. Shauna from Nizumi Soaps wants to know if I have a pet and what kind. We have a dog, McGee, and the most unfortunate looking dog you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> He's like a potato on stilts. That's what we call him. And we usually say poor McGee because that poor dog. <laughs> So he's a mutt. He's just a mutt. And um, yeah, he's, what can I say? He's more my husband. So we, I think we tolerate each other. <laughs> yeah, he's old. He needs a lot of attention. <laughs> um, and then Ann Juliet asks, um, very nice compliment. So thank you, Ann. Um, and it, it's kind of the same thing. How do you manage to continue your day job with your soaping? Not always the rest. I'm tired a lot and <laughs> stressed a lot and yeah, that's all there is to it. I mean, I just, I need to work on that. I really need to work on that. Um, so that's all the questions that I had um, as far as my channel. So I had to go back and watch my first video <laughs> and the lighting was horrible. I was a nervous wreck. I bet I taped that intro six or seven times minimum minimum guys um and when you first start your youtube channel you are not um it's very intimidating because there are so many so many that i mean the market's just saturated but probably with every genre right every youtube is just so big um so it's kind of intimidating and you think, well, what, what do I have to offer that they can't find anywhere else? I mean, there's just, what, why, <laughs> why? Um, I would say I still feel that a little bit, but I do feel like my channel's different than other channels. Um, and I, I think that it took me about eight months to kind of, find my voice per se. I mean, that sounds a little pompous and I don't, I'm not pompous you guys, but just to find my rhythm or, you know, just how I like to do things and I giggle half the time and, um, I just have fun. I just have fun and I just bring you along for whatever I happen to be doing that weekend. And it could be, uh, deodorants or soap or, or, this weekend is shampoo bars and you know it's just whatever i happen to be doing i'm just taping <laughs> so i don't know i you know it's it's hard and my let, let me open up my computer back up so one year let me see where am i at where am i at because i really i was kind of hoping i'd get to a thousand before the end of the day today it's not going to happen guys okay so as of right now i have 963 subscribers that's amazing. <laughs> you guys are amazing. I never thought I would get to 963 subscribers. Uh, when I first started, I was tickled at 50, tickled at 100, just ecstatic over 300. You know, it's just, I never really let myself think about getting to 1,000. Let me look at my watch hours. Because, you know, you can start, you can start doing some getting some um, revenue 
when you have a thousand viewers or four thousand public watch hours and i have 3152 public watch hours so i'll get to my thousand subscribers before i hit my watch time hours watched um but when i first started i never never really considered that i could i could create any sort of income with this channel um i was just I just wanted to try something new and I'm always trying something new and I'm always trying to learn new things and YouTube is definitely a learning process. <laughs> um, so I, I mean, I don't know where I was going with that, but I, I really did um, not have it in my, I would not let myself uh, hope for any more than what I had at the moment. Um, when I hit 700 subscribers, I really did start like hoping for a thousand and almost like, uh, getting excited. I, I kind of let myself get excited over maybe getting to a thousand. It's kind of like this milestone. Um, so, you know, that's exciting. It's exciting that, you know, I spend a lot of time on these videos and it's kind of exciting to think that I could create even a little bit of income i i can i can envision that very first check that i'll get is like two bucks <laughs> it's probably going to be the most exciting two dollars i've ever made <laughs> i'll let you know <laughs> i will i will let you know um so it's just exciting um to think about that and the whole the whole work and business kind of thing my i I don't even want to voice my hope because you know you don't want to put it out there and never get it but who cares I don't care okay so my hope would be that between my business and my YouTube channel maybe I could go part-time we'll see I I would love to go down to about 30 hours a week um, working on, on my day job I'm never gonna quit I need I need I need my job um, I need that security. I need my insurance. I, I need there's. I need my retirement. I'm. I'm never going to quit my job. Um, but the thought of being able to maybe scale back those hours and not put all of the nighttime and weekend time into the business and have time through the week to actually do this part is, um, especially the older I get, is is quite quite enticing. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. My goal for Covered Bridge is to make enough money to pay for three hours of my hourly salary salary for a year. So that's been my goal for, for Covered Bridge from the get-go. I need to set back three hours a week of my salary and pay myself for three hours out of Covered Bridge. That's my goal. And... Um, and I'm thinking, well, if I can do that with my covered bridge income, and if if I can supplement that by making a little income or or product sales, you know, my sales are are starting to pick up from from you guys. Is your support is? I'm sorry, this isn't a sales pitch. I'm not not at all. Um, but it is. I'm going to tear up again. It's it's beyond anything I, I thought would happen. And um, the thought of maybe possibly scaling back work another few hours on top of those three that I'm hoping to scale back is is just, it would make my life easier with trying to get everything done. And, and uh, I would have more balance because I wouldn't have to kill myself on the weekends trying to get everything done. And again, that's all on me because I don't have to make so much, right? I don't have to put two videos out every week. I don't have to make, you know, 500 bars of soap for Covered Bridge. I don't know, maybe I will, I don't know. But you know, I don't know, we'll see. I'm rambling. But um, I don't know, that's kind of where I've been. I, I it, it did take me eight months or so to really get into the groove of this. And um, I am starting to get some sales from it. I'm, I'm actually feeling like locally, I have a presence um, where I am, people are searching me out from the surrounding counties, which is amazing. So they'll come and, and purchase from me uh, just by word of mouth or they, they 
repeat business from craft shows. So I feel like my presence is a lot more, um, uh, people are more aware of me, even, even people I don't know. Like I've had recent sales lately from my website, from like Reelsville and Cloverdale and these towns that are, you know, 20, 30 minutes away. It's like, uh, I've been in craft shows in those towns, but I don't know them. So, you know, all, I, I'm growing, I'm growing. Um, but anyway, that's a big old long rabbit trail. <laughs> I'm a year old. I've made it a year. I'm so excited to see what next year brings. I'm looking forward to this time next year and looking back at this video and maybe I'll do a two year video and um, see how far I've come, see how much I've improved. Um, for sure my lighting has improved this last year, my setup, my, my room, my uh, quality of audio, my quality of uh, video, everything's, everything is much better than it was that first, first video. Um, but I still giggled in that first video, didn't I? That was funny. I was like, oh my gosh, I giggled. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. I know this is too long, so I'm going to try to edit it really quickly. I want to get it up tonight since it's the 24th, just to mark it, mark the day. And so let me get this edited and up and, um, I'll just see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.